Hello everyone. We continue our work on quadratic sequences by finding the general term or nth term of a quadratic sequence. A quadratic sequence is generated by the formula tn equals an squared plus bn plus c. tn is called the nth term or the general term. If we have the values of a, b and c, we can find any term in the sequence and the position of any term in the sequence. Look at the sequence 1, 4, 9. Let's figure out what the next number will be. This number pattern is a sequence of squared numbers. Term 1 is 1 squared which is 1. Term 2 is 2 squared which is 4. Term 3 is 3 squared which is 9. So the fourth term will be 4 squared, which is 16. Each time we squared n to give us the next number in the pattern. This is an example of a quadratic sequence with tn equal to n squared. Usually, quadratic sequences are not that easy. Let's do a more complicated one together. Look at the pattern 4, 7, 12, 19. It's not easy to say what the general term is by just looking at the numbers. Term 2 minus term 1 is 3, and term 3 minus term 2 is 5. So it is not a linear number pattern. Could it be quadratic? A quadratic sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the second difference between each consecutive term is constant. So to tell if a sequence is quadratic, we need to see if there is a constant second difference. Let's look at the number pattern again. The first difference between the terms is not constant. 7 minus 4 is 3, 12 minus 7 is 5, and 19 minus 12 is 7. Now we work out the second difference between the terms and get a constant second difference of 2. So the sequence must be quadratic. However, it is not as easy to find the nth term for this sequence as it was for the first sequence. Remember the general term for a quadratic sequence is tn equals an squared plus bn plus c. We need to develop a method to find the values of a, b and c that will work for all quadratic sequences. Let's look at a method to find the value of a. To find term 1, you substitute 1 in place of n in the general formula. So term 1 is a plus b plus c. This represents the values that are used to make the first term of any quadratic sequence. Similarly, term 2 is 4a plus 2b plus c when we substitute 2 in place of n. For term 3, we substitute n as 3 and get 9a plus 3b plus c. And term 4 is 16a plus 4b plus c, when we substitute n is equal to 4. Now that we've found the algebraic representation of each term, let's arrange them as we would a normal number pattern. Let's work out the first difference between these first four terms. We write down each of the terms in a sequence and subtract successive terms to find the first difference. Term 2 minus term 1 gives us 3a plus b. Term 3 minus term 2 gives us 5a plus b. And term 4 minus term 3 is 7a plus b. Now that we've found the first difference, let's work out the second difference. 5a plus b minus 3a plus b equals 2a and 7a plus b minus 5a plus b is equal to 2a. As expected, since we are working with the quadratic sequence, the second difference is constant. From this explanation, you can see the second difference in any quadratic sequence is equal to 2a. So we can solve for a in any quadratic sequence if we have the second difference. Since the second difference is equal to 2a, to find a in any quadratic sequence, you divide the second difference by 2. Once you have the value for a, 
you can work out the values for B and C in the general formula by substituting the values of the terms you are given. Let's look at an example to make this concept clearer. Let's look at the sequence we had earlier of 4, 7, 12, 19. We saw that this was a quadratic sequence with the constant second difference of 2. Now let's work out the general term. We know that A in the formula Tn equals An squared plus Bn plus C is half the second difference. So A will be 2 divided by 2, which is 1. We can put that value of A into the general term. So we now get N squared times 1 is N squared plus Bn plus C. Now we can use simultaneous equations to find the values of B and C by substituting any term into the equation. We can use term 1 equals 4 and term 2 equals 7. We substitute 1 in the place of n and get 1 plus b plus c equals 4. Taking the 1 to the right hand side and subtracting, we get b plus c equals 3. Let's get b by itself by taking c to the right and get b equals 3 minus c. We'll call this equation 1. Now let's substitute n equals 2 into the general term and get 2 squared plus 2b plus c equals 7 because the second term equals 7. Simplifying, we get 4 plus 2b plus c equals 7. Take the 4 to the right and subtract and we end up with 2b plus c equals 3. Call this equation 2. Then substitute equation 1 into equation 2 and solve simultaneously. In place of b, substitute 3 minus c. Now simplify by multiplying the 2 through the first bracket and add like terms. This gives us negative c is equal to negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 1 and you get c equals 3. Now let's substitute that back into equation 1 and solve for b. And we get b equals 3 minus 3, which is 0. So we have a equals 1, b equals 0, and c equals 3. Put those values back into the general term, and you have tn equals n squared plus 3. You should always check if your general term is correct by finding one of the terms in the given sequence. For example, term 3 is 12. Let's see if our formula works. To check, you simply substitute n equals 3 into the equation you found. We substitute 3 for n in the equation n squared plus 3 and get 3 squared plus 3, which is 9 plus 3 and that is equal to 12. So we do get the right answer. So our general term is correct. Let's practice this method with one example. Diamonds are arranged in the following pattern. Determine the number of diamonds in the nth pattern. First, let's write the number of diamonds in each pattern in numbers and see what number pattern we get. In the first pattern, we have two diamonds. In the second, there are six. 14 in the third, and 26 in the fourth pattern. Whenever a pattern is shown in pictures, the first step is to always rewrite as a number pattern. Now we find the first difference between the terms and get 6 minus 2 is 4, 14 minus 6 is 8, and 26 minus 14 is 12. Next we find the second difference. 8 minus 4 is 4, and 12 minus 8 is 4. The constant second difference tells us that we have a quadratic number pattern. To find the nth term, we need to find the values of a, b, and c in the general term tn equals a n squared plus b n plus c. Remember that a is half the second difference. So a equals 4 divided by 2 
which is 2. We can replace A in the formula with 2. The formula becomes Tn equals 2n squared plus Bn plus C. To find the values of B and C, we substitute any two terms given into the formula and solve simultaneously for B and C. We will use the method of substitution to solve this system of equations. Let's substitute term 1 equals 2 and term 2 equals 6 into the formula and then solve the equations. Substituting n equals 1 into the formula, we get 2 plus b plus c equals 2. Simplifying, we get b plus c equal 2 minus 2, which is 0. Taking the c to the right, we get b equals negative c. We call that equation 1. We do the same thing for term 2 and get 8 plus 2b plus c equals 6. Simplifying, we get 2b plus c equals negative 2. We call this equation 2. Now substitute equation 1 into 2. In place of b, you now have negative c. Simplifying, we get negative 2c plus c equals negative 2. Negative c equals negative 2, dividing both sides by negative 1, we get c equals 2. Substitute this answer back into equation 1 and you get b equals negative 2. We have worked out that a equals 2, b equals negative 2 and c equals 2. Now put these values back into the general term and we get tn equals 2n squared minus 2n plus 2 and that is the nth term. You should always do a quick check to see if you have the right answer for the nth term. Let's do the check. If n equals 3, we get term 3 equals 2 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 2 which is equal to 14. This was the value of the third term in the sequence. Therefore, our formula for the nth term is correct. While this method of using simultaneous equations to find A, B and C is very successful, it is quite long. In the next lesson, we look at a quicker method. So if you are willing to learn expressions that will help you to solve for A, B and C, you will be able to solve for the general term of a quadratic sequence in a much quicker way. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Number Patterns task video. You'll also be able to learn more about number patterns on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.